Hey everyone, what is going on? And welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we are taking a look at this battery pack that we have currently up on the screen. Now, one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna test this pack and ultimately see if this is a good battery and how it stacks up against one other comparable that we've already tested here on this channel. This is, of course, the Turnigy Graphene Panther version of pack. This is their highest performance class battery that you can possibly get. We're going to be specifically looking at the 5,000 milliamp hour version of this battery pack and also the 4S version of this battery. They make other versions of the pack. Of course, you can get it in different cell counts and you can get it also in different capacity counts. Of the larger capacities that you can get from this battery, this is the smallest of those larger battery capacities. Let's take a look at what the manufacturer here provides for this specific battery. Then we'll get into our internal resistance test and our performance test where we load this battery on a dyno and let it run for as long as it possibly can to use up the full amount of capacity that this pack can provide. Let's get started. So as we scroll down through this page, we can see a couple specifications that are important for us. The size, the weight of the battery, as well as the size that we mentioned. And what is very unique here on this specific battery is the pack resistance. This is not something I've ever really seen before from a battery manufacturer. And if we take a look at it, 11 milliohms for a four cell battery is actually terrible. It's an awful internal pack resistance, which I'm quite surprised because this is the high performance pack that they offer, Turnigy of course, and they're stating that it has a pack resistance of 11 milliohms. Now I really certainly hope this is not correct. I did measure that it wasn't correct in one of their previous batteries that they actually put this specification up on the website. This, of course, would, be, would have been about four or five years ago. Now, I thought maybe this is just a misprint and it comes from a different cell count because as cells go up, the pack resistance would go up naturally because the cell resistance is going to stay the same. What I did is I looked at a different cell count to see if there is a difference here in the pack resistance specifically. But one way I verify that they are in fact the exact same cells being used is I check the battery size and see if that matches as well as all the other parameters. Of course, it needs to line up with the capacity as well as the C rating. So we take a look at this specific battery here. This is a 6S battery so it's the same exact class when we look at the capacity as well as the size a 145 by 51 the 61 is of course changing because we're adding a couple more of those cells in to form a six cell pack now the pack resistance shows as 15 milliohms which is kind of again not so good however i don't see consistency between these two batteries when we have 15 milliohms for a six cell versus 11 milliohms for a four cell. I'm expecting about two thirds of the 15 and that's not what we're seeing here. So there seems to be some inconsistency. I'm really hoping that these values are out to lunch and the resistance is a lot lower than this. Let's jump right into our own internal test and get that done. So here you can see the test that we've performed. Now we did this through two batteries. Every single time I test a, a pack, what I'm doing is I'm testing not just one pack, but I'm testing two to make sure that there's some consistency between both of those packs. And I was not shipped something that is very different than the vast majority of those batteries. So I'm hoping that I can keep costs down and do this through two packs rather than one. So what we've now learned from this test is the total internal resistance of all the cells that we've measured, and we're getting an average of 1.86 milliohms. So we're gonna put in 1.86 here, and the capacity of this battery pack is going to be a 5,000 milliamp hour pack. Now the battery pack's calculated real C rating as it relates to the internal resistance here is coming out at 25.9. Definitely a far cry from the 75C that this battery is advertised. 
And now I wanna go and look at what the manufacturer was specifying. So let's make a calculation here off to the side. And of course, this is from the RC Explained Patreon calc sheet that we're doing all of this within. You can download this spreadsheet right from the link in the description below. So we'll take that 11 milliohms that we saw there on the website, we'll divide that by four, and we get 2.75 milliohms per cell. I'm not certain why the manufacturer is putting such a really high number representing an internal resistance that would not be good at all. In fact, let's throw it into here and put 2.75 in. That would say that this pack is really performing more like a 21C pack, which is very different than the actual truth where it's performing closer to a 26C pack. Now, the other pack that we ended up looking at, which is a 6S, that had a different value here. It had 15 milliohms, and of course that's by six. That's showing as 2.5. So 2.5 versus 2.75, I don't know why the exact same cells that are used in both of these batteries are actually being published with different sets of data. Very interesting indeed, and both of these are, in my opinion, out to lunch because they do not represent the reality and in fact on previous batteries that I've purchased long ago before I started doing these tests those numbers were out to lunch as well. So now let's jump into the actual performance that we got out of this battery pack when we load tested it. Here we are looking at the performance data of two battery packs, one of them being the graphene right there on the top that we tested here today, and the second battery pack being a very comparable battery, especially for speed run cars. I know a lot of you guys are using the CNHL, the G Plus series there, to make speed runs, and we're gonna compare both of these packs against each other. So the 75C graphene pack, as you can see, had a total milliamp hour that we could actually discharge using the same load that we tested for both of these batteries, 4,346 milliamp hour. That's not all that much considering that the lesser C rating, and in my personal opinion, I was expecting the graphene to perform better than the CNHL, and it did not in the very first category. Moving on to the next one, milliamp hour to 3.50 volts, we see again the graphene is underperforming when compared against the CNHL. And the time that we got to that 3.50 volts was 42 seconds and if you were to use the CNHL you're gonna get an extra almost 20 seconds more until you reach that 3.50 volt threshold at the 105 amp load that we're using here for this test. Now when you do that same thing for 3.6 volts, you get a big difference here between them, 426 and a half is going to be the milliamp hours to 3.6 as compared with the 765.2 from the CNHL and the time to 3.60, you're gonna to get to 3.60 volts in 14 seconds as opposed to 25 and a half seconds for the CNHL. Voltage at the 10 second mark, this is where we take the, the, the exact voltage that the cells are putting out and it's going to be 3.63 volts for the graphene as opposed to 3.67 volts. So Generally in all these metrics that we're covering here, the larger value is better. And then the energy per cell measured in watt minutes is coming out at 906 versus 954. Again, the CNHL is better in our test. The average cell wattage, 360.6 versus 359.3. It Again, the CNHL is performing better than the graphene here. And the weight of the cell, this is not too much of a difference. And for most applications, this is going to be essentially negligible, meaning there isn't really an actual difference that you'll be able to feel and tell. It's a 530 gram average between both of those cells. In fact, both batteries were measured at the exact same weight. Not that that's super critical. And then the average weight of the battery, not of the cell as I have it there for the CNHL, is 537 grams. So both of those batteries come in quite close to one another in terms of weight. Now when we take a look at our graph, this is exactly what we would expect. We come on to power almost instantaneously. I try and twist a dial as fast as I possibly can to get this thing loaded. I'm doing a lot better at it in my more recent tests and I plan to try and make this better. And hopefully if this goes well, we can actually improve our testing equipment to make this more automated rather than me twisting a dial. And then we get this sort of graph coming out. And then at the very end, now I have have it set so that I get a hard cut with the voltage that we're coming to so that it stops always at the same 
voltage as measured. Right here with the blue line, that re represents the actual voltage. The voltage jumps up and you can see the orange line goes to zero. That makes sense because we're hitting that low voltage hard cutoff, which cuts power. 100% of the power is removed, which means the motor stops. And what you really wanna see with this blue curve is a very little amount of deviation as it relates to this line. What we want to see is that the voltage really isn't changing much when it goes from loaded to unloaded. The bigger this line is, the more weaker that the battery is actually performing because there's a more significant voltage drop. This line is representing the voltage drop. This is what the voltage was essentially at during this area and this is where it actually ended up because it was loaded. When you load that battery, it pulls power and it pushes and sags that voltage down. Before we move on to the conclusion of this video, I do want to show you this spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is going to contain more data than what you will find in these videos. If I include every single bit of data in these videos, the video would simply just be too long. So this is a very easy and quick way for me to put this spreadsheet out there so that you guys can access it. Anyone who is a member of tier two on the RC Explained Patreon community is going to have access to this specific spreadsheet. Right now, we're only filtering out the graphene battery that we've looked at here today. However, you're going to be able to see all the batteries that we have tested all in the same spreadsheet so that you can filter different parameters or see exactly what you want to specifically dive into. We're also going to include more parameters, you know, down the road as we grow this spreadsheet out and turn it into something that we can really see and compare batteries. At the end of the day, this spreadsheet is going to help us make better choices and better decisions when we're purchasing batteries for our radio control vehicle. And to conclude this video, the graphene battery that we've tested here today simply does not perform up to the expectation that I had for it. I was really certainly expecting something more than what we've actually been able to test here today. Now, if you had a choice to make between the CNHL battery and the graphene 75C, based on this test data, you would certainly choose the battery that performed better, which is gonna be the CNHL G Plus Power. Hack. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Like the video if you did. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.